All right. So the thing is, uh, over here, uh, the text field, it is having some tag name and also I told you that you can install right you can install this studio also works the way I, I use it since one year <laughs> right and you, you see this firebug option will come up for you in this firebug option you will have console if you install firebug you see console and when you click on this small arrow over here okay this arrow right and move your mouse on the page it will give you the source code of the page okay right now suppose taking up a very simple example if you are on gmail page okay or hold on if you are on gmail page right a very simple example okay this page has got a checkbox a button a text field link normal text everything is there okay if i look at this text field then every text field has the tag name input please note this point okay every text field has the tag name input rather every button if i look at this sign in button every button also has got the same tag name input the radio button on the on any web page or a checkbox like this is a checkbox okay checkbox and radio buttons also have the tag names as input the tag names for all these four components is the same link link will always have an anchor tag if i look at this need help link on the screen okay it's always got the anchor tag a it's always there and image on the page right for example google is an image on the top this colorful google image on the top it will always have the tag name img all the images on all the web pages they have the same tag name img a drop down has got a tag name select i'll just tell you from here from my experience i know and a normal text on the page has got no specific tag name sometimes it's under div sometimes para tag dev okay span okay there are many tags okay there is no not a specific one tag for a normal text which is displayed on the page okay now text field button radio button checkbox all of them have the tag name as input okay but the optional and the mandatory attributes they differ for them okay hold on let me keep the mandatory one first and optional ones second okay the mandatory ones they are different for all for all of them for a text field if i look at the email text field over here you will always find the type attribute for a text field the type attribute is equal to text most of the time 99.99% of the times the text field will have the type attribute as text in case of a button you will find the type attribute for example this is the sign in button if i look at the sign in button you will always see that the type is submit okay this attribute will always be present and the type of the attribute would be submit for a radio button the type attribute would be equals to radio okay right and for a checkbox the type would be equal to checkbox okay for a link okay all the links on where all the web pages they are anchor tags and the href attribute would always be there with every link this will point towards the url which will open when you click on the link okay so href is the mandatory attribute for a link for img the mandatory attribute is source if you look at the google image okay the mandatory attribute over here is source this is the url from which this image it loads up okay i can copy this url okay uh, paste it in the browser open it and you will have this this is the url okay 
right select tag has got no mandatory attribute even text has got no mandatory attribute the rest of them have mandatory attributes okay there are optional attributes present these are something like id something like id name class okay these are the three commonly used optional attributes which can be present with any tag if a tag has got an id or a name not the class but if a if a particular element has got an id or a name then you should be very happy because you can uniquely identify that element okay right but not all the elements on all the on a web page will have an id or a name okay these are unique okay it cannot be that two elements on the page have the same id if they have then you should be talking to the developer and telling them not to give such ids which are common for two elements or names which are common for two elements generally the standard is the industry standard is the elements on the web pages if they are having ids then ids would be different okay the easiest way to identify an object in selenium is using the id or the name all right so let's start the process let's see how you can identify okay i'll make a simple class known as gmail a very simple example look i'm not talking about test cases now i'm not talking about complex complicated scenarios now but i am talking basics okay let's start with basics how to identify objects we are right now on part four object classifications firebug firebug and all everything okay now i'm going towards locator in selenium and all and web element interface everything okay just be with me now i write over here web element uh, say uh, sorry sorry not web element web driver driver equals to new firefox driver the interface reference equals to new class which is implementing the interface i import both of them you can hit control plus shift plus o in eclipse everything would be imported by itself you don't need to move your mouse over every element to import it hit control shift and o right you see that it gets imported right now you take this driver to gmail.com make sure you mention the protocol and after going to gmail.com you have to type in the email right now this is the email field it's an input field and luckily we are having id okay right and yes danendra this would be the objective for every course i'll have it open with me for every class i have follow this okay so don't worry that this won't be followed obviously this has to be followed okay so this has the id fine now you should be very happy that your element has got an id not every element has an id for example this text on the top it will not have it's not having an id but this text field has an id okay now there is a function known as driver dot find element okay find element function as the name suggests it will find an element on the web page okay right i told you that everything on a web page is categorized under web element so this function finds a web element on the web page with a certain criteria all right if you look at the documentation of selenium look you don't need to go to selenium.hq.org every time okay you need to uh you can import the documentation in eclipse as well right we click on this java doc link and then we get the java doc right you don't need to do this every time you can copy this link okay listen to this carefully you copy the link over here all right and go to your uh, you can say uh, project over here right click on the project and go to properties go to java build path and go to libraries tab where you see all the jars 
ओके आउट हेयर यू विल सी सिलेनियम जार टू डॉट फोर फोर और टू डॉट एक्स वॉट एवर इज द वर्जन यूर यूजिंग एक्सपैंड इट यू विल हैव द जावा डॉक लोकेशन ओके करेंटली पॉइंटिंग टू नन क्लिक ऑन इट एंड प्लेस द यू आर एल एंड रिमूव इंडेक्स डॉट एच टी एम एल फ्रॉम द यू आर एल प्लीज रिमूव दिस ओके क्लिक ऑन ओके एंड ओके एंड जावा डॉक्स वुड बी इंक्लूडेड नाउ सपोज इफ आई मूव माई माउस ओवर फायरफॉक्स ड्राइवर ओके इन एक्लिप्स इफ आई मूव माई माउस यू विल हैव द डेफिनेशन ऑफ फायरफॉक्स ड्राइवर कमिंग अप ओवर हेयर फ्रॉम द डॉक्यूमेंटेशन और इफ आई एम राइटिंग ड्राइवर डॉट यू गेट वेरियस फंक्शन राइट वेन आई क्लिक ऑन ईच एंड एवरी फंक्शन आई विल हैव द डॉक्यूमेंटेशन ऑफ द फंक्शन कमिंग अप इन साइड एक्लिप्स ओके right from the documentation if i click on any link you will have the java docs opened up inside eclipse only you can go to the frames view and you will have it opened over here so you don't have to go to selenimhq.org again and again okay so right i hope you are able to understand okay right now there is a function known as find element this function finds the first element using the given method okay right now what is the method the method is specified by the by class in the documentation there is a class known as by it gives various mechanisms used to locate the elements within a document document means the web page these are the various ways you can find an element by the class name by css selector by id by link text by name we are going to talk about them right now we let's talk about id so by is a class inside selenium api right you write over here find element by dot everything inside this class is static that's why you can directly access it with the class name i told you yesterday right that if you have something static you don't need to create the object you can directly access it right yesterday we had this user class right wherein i was accessing number of batteries in the phone by directly writing phone dot number of batteries okay similarly over here you can write driver dot find element by the id of the element okay by the class by is a class and there are various locator mechanisms i am talking about id first okay you give the id of the it's very simple okay it's not a tough thing which i am explaining you right now okay so you get the id of the email field on gmail the id is email so you find the email okay find element will find the email okay if you look at web driver interface in web driver interface you will be able to see the function find element this is the one which we are using okay it returns you the object of web element which i discuss right web element will be returned i can write over here email field all right it returns you the reference of web element interface okay the magic is done by this function automatically you get the email now what do you want to do with this field you want to say type in something inside it send keys hello send keys function inside the web element interface types inside the text field okay you can look at the web element interface there are lot of few functions clear clear will clear the value of a text field click will click on a link or something and one of the functions is send keys use this method to simulate typing into an element okay right so when you run this you will see the browser opens and it goes to gmail and it types in hello right 
Okay, so we found the element by the ID of the element. Now we use the function driver dot find element. Find element function finds the first web element with the criteria. Now if there are two elements on the page with the email ID, what will happen? Suppose the developer does a mistake, he gives in two elements, two text fields on the page or two objects on the page which have the same ID email. One is present over here, the other one is present over here. Which one will Selenium use? Okay. Now when Selenium scans the page, it scans the page from top left towards right like this and it goes down. It scans the page like this. And whichever is the first element present and whichever is the first element found, which is this one in this case, it will use it and move forward. It will not use the second one when you use driver.find element. If you want to use the second one, there are ways to do that. I'll discuss that later on. But please note find element function finds the first web element using the method. Okay. Right, I hope you are able to understand. Fine. Now, similarly, you have the password column as well. You can write web element password equals to driver dot find element by the criteria. If you look at the password field, okay, this is my password field. All right. Fine. Now the password field again has an ID. We are very lucky. It's also got a name. Yeah, let's use the name this time. You can also use the locator name. If you're using ID or name, it is very easy for you to work. The problem starts when the object has got no ID or name. Okay, password dot send keys. You can type in the any password and when you run it, it will enter the user ID password. Right. Okay, now what happens if there is no ID, no password, nothing? All right, for example, for example, a page like this. Okay, if you look at the text over here, sign in to continue to Gmail. This has got no ID, no text, nothing. No ID, no name, sorry. How will you identify it? So over here, X path, they come into the play. X path is like the address of the element on the web page, like every house in a house, every, Mithlesh I'll talk about encrypting passwords on later on. It is very simple. You can use base64 encoding. Okay, that is not a big deal. Just search on Google base64 encoding on, in Java, you will get ready-made code. Okay. So over here, if you, <coughs> sorry, if you are not having an ID or a name, what will you do? Over here, XPath, they come and XPath is like the address. Like every flat has a flat number. Every house has a house number. Okay. Similarly, every component on the web page has an address. Okay, right, and that address can be denoted with the XPath, right. For example, I'll open a notepad. Okay, the XPath, they are, they are of two types. One is complete XPath. One is absolute XPath. All right. Fine, one is absolute and one, sorry, not absolute, partial, I'm sorry. One is partial or one is complete or you can say absolute XPath. Let's start with this one. Not a very good XPath, but a very strong thing, right? It starts from the base of the document, HTML. Okay, it starts with the HTML tag. And it goes down till the tag in which the element is present. Like in our case, we have an HTML tag. Under HTML, there are two tags, head and body. We want to go inside the body tag because the final tag H2 in which we are interested is inside the body tag. Okay. So inside HTML tag, there is a 
body tag right okay inside body tag there are many other tags right one of the tags is div all right fine so you go inside the div tag okay now inside this div tag there are three divisions in which you are interested to go inside the second division because your h2 tag finally lies inside the second division okay so you write over here div in the brackets 2 that means you are interested to go inside the second division outside out of all the three divisions now inside the second division there are again three divisions and you want to go inside the first one because your h2 tag is inside the first one okay so you write over here slash div one and inside it you have the h2 tag okay so this would be your x path denoting this particular text if you want to read read this okay you can use this x path and you can read it but there is a problem with this x path the problem is it starts with the base of the document and goes till the element okay if something changes in the page tomorrow something is removed or something is added in between then this kind of x path would have to be changed now when you make a selenium code you have to obviously make it in such a way that the changes in the application have minimum effect on your code if you are making all absolute x paths in your application and if you are having 300 x paths like this if something changes at the beginner level of the page like if just after the body tag right boom everything will go for a toss you'll have to make your x paths again but it is very accurate many times when things don't work complete x path works okay so remember this many times when your x path normal x path will not work the complete x path will work when partial x path doesn't work the complete x path works okay now what is a partial x path partial x path please note always starts from double slash okay if i write double slash star this means all the elements on the page whether whether it is a button whether it is a link okay whether it is a text field anything this denotes all the components on the web page if i am writing like this double slash input in the brackets at the rate id equals to email okay this means that there is a input tag on the page whose id attribute is email right hold on i'll tell you before we go inside the depth of the xpath install a, uh, you should be installing an add on on the top of firebug known as firepath it helps you to calculate the xpath automatically okay just open up your firefox have firebug installed and just type firepath firebug do this in firefox okay and go to the first link and install firepath okay once you have installed it you will have this ready okay now in firepath if i choose the option generate absolute xpath and if i move my mouse over any component it will give me the complete xpath from the base of the document to that element okay if i go to the gmail page right if i click on over here and if i look at the right hold on divya i'll answer a question for other browsers okay if i look at this this should be the xpath for the text field okay now if i am not generating absolute xpath i'll be generating partial ones if i look at the xpath from here 
so it will give you an element x path like this. Don't include the initial dot. Okay, it will include, make the x path like this. That is double slash star any element or better is you can give the tag name. You can write like this or you can write like this. It doesn't matter. But this one is the above one is more specific. It's saying that there's an input tag with ID email. This x path is saying that there is any component on the page with ID email. Okay, right. Now, if you look at, say, if you go to this website, n.redif.com, right? If I look at the link over here, cricket, this is the partial XPath for this link. Now, how this XPath got derived? Okay, now it saw the, it went to the page, Firebug went to the page and it saw that this is the link. Hold on. This is the link. Okay. But this link has got no ID. So it went one step above inside this div, which can be mapped over here. This division. This division has not got any ID. So it went one step up. It went inside this division, which can be mapped over here. It's also got no ID, so it went to this division, which can be mapped here. And finally, it found a division with an ID. Okay, so it started the X path from this division. That there is a division with the ID column 1, which can be found over here. Okay, this, these things are same. Inside it, there's a div one, then div, then div, and then the link. It form it formed the partial x path like this, right? Are you getting my point? How the partial x path got formed over here? Right. How can you use a href over here? I couldn't get you. Me too. I couldn't get you. So it tries to find the ID of the element. If there is no ID, because ID is supposed to be unique, so it keep on traverses upwards and finds the element element's ID. What if it finds no ID? It keeps on traversing up and it finds no ID. It will give you a complete X path in that case by default. Okay. Uh, right. Hello. Yeah. yeah. Uh, instead of ID, can we directly use uh, the X path which where the anchor has that particular H I'll, I'll I'll tell you. I'll talk about that topic in coming classes. I'll tell you. Okay. Okay. Right. Yeah. yeah. Now you can use this X path directly over here as well. I'll comment this code, and I can write over here driver dot find element by the x path as well and i can give the x path this x path or having input tag anything can will work dot send keys hello right so when you run this this will work okay it will go and it will work now what about other browsers I just talked about Mozilla right now. Look, the thing is, the page source is same for all the browsers. Okay, and one more thing. I just wrote one line. Look, you can also write everything in one line. The execution starts from left side to right side. This thing is executed first. The web element is extracted and on that I'm firing the send keys hello. So instead of writing two lines, you can also write everything in one line. Similarly for the password as well. Okay, if you are on Gmail page and if you are having this password field, you can have this password as well, XPath. Okay, in one line, you don't have to write web element, element, and on the next line, you wire the send keys. You can write in one line. And as I was suggesting, what about other browsers? Look, the page source is same. The IDs will not change if the browser changes. 
the page source which we get from the server remains the same in different browsers you don't there is no website which works differently in different browser i mean the functionality okay right the elements they are same they are hardly you'll find hardly any website which is having different object in different kind of uh, browser i have personally i've never seen that okay so even if i change this i detect my object in firefox and if i change this to chrome it will work okay if i change this to chrome driver and you have to set the system property hold on for chrome driver and when you run this this will work for chrome as well you see that okay in case you want to find the xpath in chrome okay right uh, you have <coughs> uh, something known as chrome inspector okay right for example this is a text field okay i right click on this text field you will always have the option inspect element all right you inspect the element you that element would be highlighted this is known as chrome inspector you right click on this element and you will have the option of copying the x path of this element okay you copy this and you can paste it over here okay instead of double quotes you have to change it to single quote that's it so you can get it from chrome as well but if you find it on firefox it will work on chrome and ie right if you have to open the chrome inspector you can right click on the element and select the option inspect element or you can hit f12 of the keyboard and chrome inspector will open up okay right so you can bring it to the bottom of the page as well right in case of i you have got i developer tool if you hit f12 in i that will open but generally if the uh, uh, what i feel is i recognize it in firefox and on the other browsers also it works because the page source remains the same the source the response which comes up from the server is the same for all the browsers okay right so this was about today we i talked about interfaces right i talked about how interfaces are used how you can open up the browser of your choice and start working on it like the same code which i have written if i take it to gmail.com right now i can paste the same code over here i can decide that which browser i want to work on and with that browser i will go to the gmail.com website and work on it tomorrow if i change the browser over here to firefox then my code will also work on firefox or i okay so you don't have to worry you have to take the advantage of the interfaces right open the browser dynamically fine go to the website detect the elements by id by name by xpath anything okay so this is about part 4 which is object classification identifying elements firebug firepath chrome inspector locators in selenium i talked about locator is nothing but by dot when you write these are the various locators we'll talk about all of them okay just be with me i talked about three of them that id uh, and name and xpath okay we saw xpaths are of two types complete xpath and partial xpath okay right and web element interface is very important one okay we saw right uh, which denotes all the elements in a web page okay so it's not visible right now okay we saw the concept of xpath we saw the concept of a uh, complete and absolute xpath okay now we need to look at the concept of customized xpath common xpath and all uh, well i don't want to start with that topic right now because i need at least 45 to 50 minutes for that okay and i think i've taught quite a lot in this class starting from part 3 we almost went over to part 5 okay 
and uh, i'll stop here for today okay just try to do the same things which i tried to do with you okay the object classifications and all we also saw that okay so hashish or, a question yeah uh, yes tell me show me the yeah, inspect element in uh, chrome uh, because i'm trying to do it and i don't see uh, what is saw in firefox like export determination and all uh, can you show me uh, yeah right click over here okay and select the option inspect element you'll see it coming up okay right click on the element inspect element okay okay yeah right fine i'll stop the recording yeah meanwhile